So in our last video, we created all of the action handlers using the Hasura TypeScript CodeGen SDK thing uh, to be able to go ahead and insert users, check for users or friends in the case of our project. And what we wanna do now is go ahead and connect these two actions inside of the Hasura ecosystem. So we're working with actions here to be able to give us the full flexibility to be able to run this SDK of creating users from anywhere we would wanna consume the Hasura SDK. So what we're gonna do now is head over to uh, the uh, has sort of a project here and I'm going to go ahead and create a couple of actions. So my first action I'm going to create is a mutation here and this is going to be a login and the input that I'm going to be giving this here I'm actually just going to give it straight up username and password and I'm going to go ahead and call this the friend output in this case. So what we're doing is we're going to we're creating a type that we're going to be exposing on our front end called login. The login is going to take in a username and a password and it's going to return a friend output. That friend output we're going to go ahead and overwrite this this demo here and we're going to be able to return things like username which is going to be a string. We're able to return things like password. Uh, for the, this is for our login here which is going to be a string and it's going to be able to return a token which is also going to be a string. And so this allows us to be able to work with uh, anything on our front end we would wanna be able to handle this. So password, again, these are things we're gonna to have to kind of talk about locking down, but for now, this is actually a totally uh, fine definition for what we wanna create. A login takes a username and a password and it gives us a friend output. Now becomes the part where we actually need to connect this to our ecosystem, and that is gonna be through our uh, API handler. Now you'll see that we what we have here is our action base handler is currently defined for uh, for the Docker host. What we want to do is be able to use this with our um, uh, with a environment variable where we'll be able to modify this in our production environment and be able to have a local version doing one thing and an external version doing another. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and uh, take this um, this base path and we're gonna go ahead and create a new uh, variable here called action uh, base handler. And what actually I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually just save this for now so we save it and then we're gonna come back and modify it. So we're gonna go ahead and create the action and then we'll come back and we'll modify all of this. So what we're gonna do now is go back over to our code. We're gonna go ahead and create a uh, action-based handler instead of Docker Compose. And so here we need to go ahead and provide action-based handler. This is absolutely up to you what you wanna call this. This is not something uh, this, this is not required. Um, and we need to go ahead and actually use the local the uh, host.docker.internal3000 because that is saying what you're seeing as your external host IP address, now you're gonna to wanna to use the port 3000. So this is just a Docker thing, uh, but action-based handler is what we wanna use. So we're gonna go ahead and go back to our Hasura instance here. We're gonna go ahead and stop this. We're gonna go ahead and uh, run all of our shutdown behaviors here again. So we're gonna go ahead and, um, so we're rebooting that. While we're doing that, let's go ahead and actually take this action-based handler over to our cloud instance and uh, we can make sure that Hasura is now running. So we're gonna restart our Hasura instance. And so now we're gonna go over to our uh, cloud instance here and we're gonna go ahead and add our environment variable uh, so that we have this over here. We're gonna go ahead and new env uh, environment variable, action base handler, and in our case, our base handler is actually gonna be this uh, live one that we're working with with Vercel. So we can just go ahead and copy this link paste this over, this is our, our base. And uh, we have that identified. We wanna make sure we're kinda of consistent with trailing slashes or not. We're gonna go no trailing slash. We're gonna add that, so now our cloud is gonna be consistent and uh, and our local version of Hasura is consistent. So now we're back here, we should have everything uh, pretty much ready to be updated. We're gonna work with this action base handler, which is the variable that we used. Okay, so we got lowercase base handler, and then we're gonna go ahead and uh, tell this to fo um, forward client headers to webhook just in case this is something we would wanna use later on, that's fine. Uh, now we're gonna go ahead and be able to do some modification here. So the modifications here allow us to override the behavior. Right now it's just gonna send it to that base path and we don't wanna do that. We wanna go ahead and actually add some 
uh, option transforms. So we're gonna do a post request and our uh, path is API slash actions. And in this case, we are doing login, if I remember correctly, we're doing login. And we're gonna go ahead and just pass in that, uh, this is the, the full string of what we're trying to create. We can actually uh, apply the sample context here for it to sort of know what it is that we're talking about because it's complaining about not knowing about the environment variable, but that's fine. So we can see that the entire base handler would then resolve to, uh, to this one here. So this is what it's looking for. There we go. So that's what it's gonna resolve to, which is the path that our uh, Next.js application is running on. Now we wanna modify the actual uh, payload transform itself. So instead of passing in this whole action name, what we wanna do is we're gonna tell it that it is gonna simply be this username and password. Uh, that's the sample input. We wanna do is modify the, uh, the request transform here. So we're telling it that it's gonna simply get the uh, username and password and instead of arg1 we actually just went ahead and, and gave it two inputs with those names we didn't nest them underneath a, an additional type so we have body input username body input password and now it's able to see that uh, we have that now i can reset this top uh, action there there we go so now we can see what it would expect it's expecting to see username and password being passed on to that action handler and that's what we want so we're going to go ahead and hit uh, save action Okay, we have all of our code now uh, input. We have this output uh, for the right now for this. We have our environment variables uh, defined. We've uh, we've given it the correct API path. We've given it all of the correct inputs. We're going to test this out now. And when we go over here, we're going to run this. It's going to error on us because I'm comparing a unencrypted version of the password with an unencrypted version of the password. Bcrypt is not going to like that. Uh, it's going to give us the invalid error. So we're going to go ahead and run this. It's not going to work but we can see that we are getting uh, the, the message back that it is invalid. So what we're gonna do at this point is we're gonna actually have to uh, say goodbye to our users and uh, recreate them, but we're gonna do that first when we've created the sign up action next. So we're gonna go over to sign up and I'm gonna head over to the, uh, the actions again and using the same method that we've done here, we're just gonna go ahead and recreate this behavior essentially. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna head over to our uh, type, um, this type here, we're gonna just create a new action from, from scratch and we're gonna use this as sign up. I wanna copy this actually over here. This is gonna save me a bit of code. And uh, we're gonna use the friend output which is already in our system and we're gonna be able to take our uh, payload transform from down here. Okay, we're gonna create a new one. We're gonna come up here to the top. We're gonna to paste in our definition of the type mutation. Instead, we're gonna call this sign up and it's gonna use friend output, which is fine. We don't need to have any new type declarations. We're gonna go ahead and use the same action base handler. And we're gonna go ahead and pass on the, uh, the headers to the client. And what we wanna do now is we're gonna go ahead and head down to our uh, request transform options. We're gonna make this a post request again. Our path for this was gonna be API actions sign up in this case and what we're going to do is add the uh, payload transform and that payload transform is going to be shaped like this which is going to simply give us the username and password and we should be able to get the correct uh, output let's go ahead and paste in our environment variable again just to kind of confirm that everything would look the way we'd expect so if we go to the show sample context we can see now that we have everything uh, the way we would want. Oh, it's, it's handler, not action, not URL, so action base. What did I call it? I called mine handler, so we go with handler. And we have that paste there, so we can have a look down, uh, down the line here. We're gonna remove the session variable there and we can see that what we would get is the uh, correct output. Okay, our action for sign up looks to be uh, correct as well. We'll go ahead and create that action. And with that action created, we have login and sign up that should be working. So if we come to the API now and we switch this to a sign up, 
I'm going to go ahead and make a new user here called um, Tim. If you catch that reference, get on you. Uh, we're going to go ahead and go with the password uh, 123 in this case again. And we're going to go ahead and try a sign up. And we see error with query. So we can see we have a problem here in our code. We have GraphQL error non null violation uh, value in column name violates a not null constraint. So that is because I need to pass in a name, <laughs> not just username. I need to pass in a name in this case, uh, which is Tim. And I need to modify all of my code <laughs> to support that. Um, what we're going to do is uh, just do that through the magic of, uh, we'll do one together and then we'll modify the rest uh, separately. So coming over to the uh, mutations we wrote underneath the queries directory, all we need to do is modify that it, we also take in a uh, name field. And uh, we could actually go ahead and do this a different way. We're going to actually say that we have decided as a team that we're going to not support the name field of friend. This will cause other issues for us in a moment, but that's okay. We're going to go ahead and just uh, remove this column. And we're gonna allow username to be the only thing that we're actually working with. This is gonna now allow us, uh, we need to confirm, yes, yeah, saying, hey, you're doing something pretty big here with your metadata. We need to now modify our get friends down here and we're gonna say that we're just looking at username. And then back to our index page where we're gonna be referencing that, we're gonna see that it's gonna uh, complain about this in a moment. I'm gonna say the friend Username is what we're going to be showing. It doesn't see it at the moment. I'm going to go ahead and regenerate these uh, types here. So we'll go ahead and run the uh, the code gen. With that code gen added, what we're going to get now is uh, in a second, this will say, okay, uh, yeah, yeah, I know what you're talking about. All right, so we can save that. And from there, we now in theory are no longer worrying about the name field which had a non-null constraint. Um, this is fine. And we're gonna go ahead and look at our API. And let's try that sign up again. And we can see that it's working as expected. We have Tim coming back. We have the, uh, the token as well. And in this case with sign up, yeah, sign up actually does not get uh, password. Um, as an output because on the action that we define for sign up password does not get returned to the user on sign up um, just uh, just username and we don't need that uh, we only need it for the uh, for the login behavior um, later on okay so we have the functioning code there we can actually go ahead and test this now so we have username tim and password we can just switch this over to a login and we can go ahead and check and we should be able to get a fresh token that way. And everything is working. We have our APIs, our, our sign up and our login connected. And we're able to now use this API uh, into our front end where we'll be able to store this code inside of a local storage. Again, yeah, I know. Uh, we're gonna put this in a local storage where we'll be able to work with this in our uh, writing of content. So this is gonna help us be able to uh, create orders where we're going to be able to automatically pre-populate with the incoming token uh, or, or user ID so that we really have an idea of, uh, of who's coming in, who's being created. So let's go ahead and try this again with the ID uh, on our uh, login here. And uh, it looks like I haven't provided that on the action itself. Uh, I have, but I haven't done it on the action definition. So let's go ahead and go and modify that real quick. So actions. We're gonna also say that underneath the custom types, this friend output also supports an output of uh, UUID. We hit save on that. And then if we go to our API, we should be able to get the user ID on a login. And we do. So let's go ahead and clean up our bad users, our bad friends now. We're gonna go ahead and delete uh, these Peter, Paul, and Mary. Thanks for the thanks for the music. We're gonna go ahead and delete them, and uh, we have now Tim as our only friend. But you know, you only need one. 
though, that's gonna take it up for this video. In the next one, we're gonna now start to look at how do we actually create roles for these users, our friends that we've created. How do we uh, go ahead and use those to be able to make orders, like auto-populated, uh, that we can then so, sort of have scoped private access to just the orders I've made. We're gonna actually be able to make the pizza ordering system entirely, where we're gonna be able to put toppings on it, and et cetera, et cetera. And uh, starting to now actually really build out the usefulness of this application. The API is nearly complete. Uh, the front end has a little ways to go, but this is gonna wrap it up for this video and we'll see you in the next one. Thank you.